Hi everyone, I'm Chef Susie with Escafe Online. And this morning we're going to be making the classic Charlotte dessert. Super elegant, super beautiful dessert. If you make this for your friends and family, you'll be sure to dazzle them. So last week we made the lady fingers, which are a key component to the Charlotte dessert. What we're gonna be doing is we're going to be lining a mold with the lady fingers, and then we're gonna be filling the mold. What's nice about this dessert and the techniques I'm gonna be showing you today is you can apply so many different flavors and textures. So please explore the Charlotte, have a lot of fun with it. We're just going to be making a basic one today. Keep in mind, you're going to be layering mousse cake and fruits on the inside. You could even incorporate some nuts in there. Any flavors, you can do this in chocolate. Today we're gonna to be doing it with vanilla and raspberry, but even you could, um, dip your cookies in chocolate, you could put some chocolate cake in the inside and even some chocolate mousse. So knowing all that, let's get started. So I've got my lady fingers here and this is the mold that we're gonna be using today. This is just a springform mold which most of us have in our kitchens and we use for our cheesecake assignment. It releases on the side. And I chose this mold because it's really easy to get the Charlotte out of this mold. There is a classic Charlotte mold that's a little smaller and a little more tapered if you'd like to buy that one. Otherwise, you can use a springform pan. You can also use a cake pan, but you're going to have to invert it to get it out. Keep that in mind. Or you can even use a bowl with um, high straight sides. So let me know if you're interested in exploring the Charlotte dessert and you're looking for a pan or a mold in your kitchen to make this with. So knowing all that, let's get started. So I always line my pans that I'm filling with cake and mousse with plastic just to ensure it's going to come out and there's no sticking. This is a... Um, a non-stick pan and most things won't stick to it but keep in mind mousses and jams and fruits also give off liquids and these things become very sticky so with the plastic lining it's sure thing that's going to come out so take it from me the first couple times you do this line your pan your bowl with plastic and it's going to be much easier on you so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put my cake board in the bottom and this is what's going to be holding the cake together. And what we need to do is we need to start this cake with a base, whether it's a piece of sponge cake or the lady fingers themselves. What I like to do is I like to put a piece of sponge cake in the bottom and then I put my lady fingers around the side. So like I said, you can um, go ahead and put lady fingers in the bottom if you like. It's good too if you're gonna be soaking the lady fingers to put them in the bottom. So what I like to do is trim the bottoms off my lady fingers before I start to put them in the pan. This is a good size, I'm testing it out and I'm gonna use this kind of as a maquette for the rest of these that I'm going to be cutting. You can just use the lady finger in its classic oval shape, but I like to trim off the bottoms for just a very clean look. And please let me know if you have any questions. And keep in mind, they don't have to be perfect. So um, you're the only ones that is really gonna be seeing your imperfections in these things. So no worries if you don't get them exactly right. They don't have to all be the same size. And do we have any questions while I'm trimming up the lady fingers? So this is a nine inch pan that I'm using and it's going to take about maybe 20 to 22 lady fingers. So keep that in mind. I've given you a big recipe for lady fingers for 96. They freeze well and they're just also really nice to eat. Okay, so let's go ahead and stand these lady fingers up around the outside of the pan. Try to get them as close together as you can. If you're having some problems where they're falling down, you can squeeze a little jam in between them. It's just gonna give them some nice flavor. And what I'm doing is I'm putting the top of the lady finger out because that's the side that you're gonna see for the presentation. So you want to have the outside of the lady finger facing out and the inside bottoms facing to the inside of the pan. Okay, so I'm gonna keep trimming these up and please let me know if you have any questions. So once we get our pan prepared, we're gonna set it aside, and then we're going to be making a simple Bavarian cream 
from the database. It's one of the recipes in the fundamentals program, which some of you have made already or will be making. I like to use a Bavarian cream when I'm doing my Charlotte Royale because it's just nice and smooth. It flattens out very nicely and it cuts great too. You can also use any mousse. Be sure if you're making something with fruit that it has some gelatin in it so it can hold its shape so you can cut it. A lot of the mousses with chocolates in them, they will hold their shape well, but keep in mind if it's something with fruit, you've got to pick a recipe that's got some gelatin in it. Okay, so would you have any questions? So I'm just kind of carefully standing my lady fingers up in here. And then I'm just going to continue to cut off the bottoms. And has anyone made the classic Charlotte dessert yet? Once you do this, you will be so happy with it. And I'm telling you, your friends and family will be completely impressed with you. So there is another form of the Charlotte, which is called the Charlotte Royale. And you can make that in a bowl. It's typically seen, seen in the dome shape. And the Charlotte Royale is made with the, um, the classic cake roll. What you do is you slice your cake roll. I usually make mine with like a red jam because it just stands out a little bit nicer. You could also make your cake roll with some ganache, a nice chocolate touch. And what you'll do is you'll line a bowl with the cake roll and then you're just gonna fill it the same way that we're filling the Charlotte today. So this Charlotte is gonna have the lady fingers on the side, but the Charlotte Royale is going to have the cake rolls all around the outside. So that's a super nice effect. I'm sure that some of you have seen those before in pictures. So that's the classic Charlotte Royale. Super easy to make. We've made cake rolls before. Okay, so I'm nearing the end here. So. I'm going to kind of look for a big lady finger to fill this gap. So what you can do is when you near the end, you can um, if you have too much of a gap because you want to get these as close together as you can. Then maybe you can just put two large lady fingers together. Okay, so our pan is nicely molded with the lady fingers in the cake. We're going to go ahead and set this aside and now we're going to make our Bavarian cream. And please let me know if you have any questions so far. Okay, let's go ahead and clean up our counter. Okay, so for the Bavarian cream dessert, we're just going to be making a real simple creme anglaise of vanilla sauce. I've got some milk on the stove here, which I'm going to be turning on with a little bit of vanilla in it. And I've got my egg yolks and my sugar. So we're going to warm the milk and then we're going to add it to the egg yolk and sugar mixture. And this is called tempering. Then it's going to go back on the stove to cook a little bit. We'll add the gelatin. We'll leave it set up and we'll fold in our cream and our filling will be well on its way. Okay, so do we have any questions on anything so far? Okay, so you're going to want to get that mold ready, have your lady fingers in cake, have everything together before you start on your mousse because a mousse or Bavarian cream, that can set up quickly on you. So you want to be ready because you kind of want to be able to press it into the mold. And please let me know if you have any questions. So we're just going to warm this milk, and we have a question. How big of a gap do you leave between the sponge cake and the lady fingers? The question is, how big of a gap do you leave between the sponge cake and lady finger? You're really going to want to fill it in. So what I did is, this is a 9-inch pan that I'm using. I cut an 8-inch piece of cake, and there was just really a small gap, about a quarter of an inch. And as you could see, when I was going around, I was kind of pushing the cake in a little bit. So I was kind of pushing it in to make room for my lady fingers so they fit in here nice and snugly. So just take your time with this, especially when you're doing it for your first time. 
And um, go ahead and if you need to trim your sponge a little bit, it's okay if you have some gaps down there, the mousse is just gonna fill all that in. That's why we wanna choose a mousse or a Bavarian that's going to set well. And um, that way it can kind of flow into your gaps a little bit. It's gonna set and kind of keep the whole thing together. So our milk is nice and warm. We're gonna be tempering it in to our egg yolk mixture. And then everything is going to go back on the stove. We're going to cook it until it gets just a little bit thick and add our gelatin. Okay, so do we have any questions on anything moving forward? Okay. With this vanilla sauce, you're going to be careful not to cook this too much. You want to cook it until it coats the back of your spoon. So really keep a close eye on it, especially on some of these burners that get really hot. And you're going to put it right in here. And then we're going to put the whole thing on ice. I can feel it starting to get a little bit thicker. You definitely don't want to bring this to like a rumbling boil or anything like that. Just kind of cook it slowly. I'm going to add some thickness and it's a nice base. And please let me know if you have any questions. We're going to be keeping a close eye on this. I've got my spoon here. It's going to start to bubble a little bit around the outside. So definitely still very thin. It's not showing any coating on the back of my spoon. So it'll be ready shortly here. We just have a small amount. And then we'll cool this down and we'll go ahead and assemble our Charlotte. I did make one earlier. It's well set and we're going to be decorating that and I'll show you how to unmold it too. Okay. So the lady fingers that I'm using for the Charlotte today, I dried these out pretty well. So they would stand up nicely and so they wouldn't stick to the sides too much. What I did is after I bake them, I opened the oven door and I let them cool down in the oven. And then um, I checked them to see if they were dry enough. They needed a little bit more, so I turned the oven on again real low and I let them sit in there until they became dry. And you can feel them when they're becoming dry, they're gonna um, not bend on you. And I like to get some of that moisture out. This way, the um, lady finger doesn't stick to the mold. So it has a nice, clean look. So our sauce is really coming along nicely here. I'm going to pull it off the stove here in just a second. Okay, it's getting thicker. It's almost going to be coating the back of my spoon here in just a minute. Definitely when you're making this vanilla sauce, whether it's small batch or a large batch, don't go anywhere because it can really thicken on you and bubble quickly. So it's coating the back of my spoon. That's my test. So we're going to be pouring it in our bowl to get it cooled down before we add our cream. So this is the time where we're going to be adding our gelatin. So I've got some gelatin that I softened earlier. I'm just using some powdered gelatin. It kind of made one big piece here, but no worries, that's going to easily melt. It's gonna dissolve right in here. Remember, we're softening the gelatin with water, the powdered gelatin, or when we're using the leaf gelatin sheets, we're hydrating them. And then with the leaf gelatin, you're gonna pull it out of the water and with the powdered gelatin, you're just going to put the whole piece in. 
and then we're dissolving it. So soften with water, dissolve with heat. And then you're going to get that clearness. And it's going to give you the structure that you need in your mousses and bavarians. Okay. Now that this is well incorporated, we're going to put this on some ice and let it cool down for a little bit until we can fold in the cream. So it's just going to take a little bit here. And please let me know if you have any questions. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this aside. And then we're going to put some berries in the bottom of our Charlotte and talk about the filling a little bit more. Okay. So what I like to do is use raspberries in my Charlotte. You can use strawberries, but keep in mind, they're not going to last real long in the refrigerator because they've got a lot of water in them. So I always recommend to use raspberries. You can use other fruits such as apricots. You can soak your cake. You can put jam on the cake. Really, any flavor which you would like to use is just perfect because it's going to be your own variation. So we're just putting our raspberries in. You can stand them up like this or you can just sprinkle them in. And then what we'll do is we're going to put a layer of Bavarian and then a layer of cake. We're going to alternate. You don't have to put fruits in. You can just use flavored mousses, even plain mousses or Bavarians. What's nice once you learn this technique is you can really do anything with this dessert and customize it to make it your own. So please, when you make these charlottes, send me some pictures. I'd really, really like to see what you're doing. Okay, so now we've got our raspberries in the bottom. Let's go ahead and check on this vanilla sauce that's cooling down for us. It's still quite warm. Let's go ahead and bring it over here to the table and we'll keep an eye on it. So we're just going to be keeping this on ice until it starts to cool down a little bit and right before it sets. If it starts setting up on you, you're not going to be able to fold it into the cream. And if it's too hot, the cream is going to separate. So it's kind of a little bit of a fine line. And once you make this a few times, you'll become familiar with it. We have a question. The question is, is if you were going to use raspberry as a flavor, when would you add the juice? For the Bavarian, for example, you would make um, the creme anglaise. And what you would do is you would cut back a little bit on the milk. Maybe since we used, I used 18 ounces of milk, maybe use one third or one quarter raspberry puree. And that'll give you a nice raspberry flavor. Okay, so this is cooling because I can feel it cool a little bit. It's starting to get a little bit thick. And it's just about ready to have the cream folded into it. Like I said, we don't want this to get too cool because it's going to lump up on us. But then on the other hand, if it's too warm, it's going to separate our cream. So kind of keep a close eye on these things. Don't go too far. And you can kind of feel the warmth with your finger. Let's go ahead and set our Charlotte aside so nothing happens to it. And please let me know if you have any questions. Yeah, this is just about ready. And I keep stirring it a little bit here. Okay, I feel a little bit of coolness, which is perfect. So this is right before it's going to set, so I'm going to be taking it off the ice. So there are a lot of images if you Google the classic Charlotte dessert and you can get some ideas and they're so beautiful. And they also make a nice gifts and nice centerpieces. Maybe if you're going to someone's house for the holiday, you might want to bring something like this along. It's um, definitely stunning 
and will capture everyone's attention. Okay, so my crema anglaise with my gelatin in it is cooled down, so I'm just gonna be folding in the cream. And then this is gonna be the filling for our classic Charlotte. The super beautiful dessert. The salsa looks really nice with some vanilla beans in it. You can use liqueurs. I'm going to go ahead and use my whisk a little bit here to kind of help this along. Chocolate chips are nice too. If you wanted to add some chocolate chips, you can put those in the bottom. Something a little bit different. It would add some nice crunch. Okay, so do we have any questions on anything? Okay. Now that our mixture is just about ready, we're going to be filling our classic Charlotte. So with the Bavarian cream, you're also going to get a very smooth top to your Charlotte, which is really nice component of this dessert. It just gives it a clean, elegant look. You can also put some gelatin on top. I've got a few pieces of whipped cream in here. I'm just kind of whisking these out a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill our dessert. So we've got our ladyfinger lined mold. I've got some raspberries in the bottom and I'm just gonna be pouring this Bavarian in. You can use a mousse and spread it in like I said, but I like to use the Bavarian cream. It's a nice, smooth effect. Okay, we'll kind of jiggle that in a little bit. Okay, so next we're going to be putting our sponge cake on top. And then we're going to finish it off with some Bavarian. You can also put another layer of fruit too if you like. But today I'm just going to be finishing this off with some more of the vanilla Bavarian cream. Okay, so I've got my sponge cake. And keep in mind with this sponge cake, you can make it any thickness that you like. I like to go just a little bit thinner, but you can also make thicker pieces and thinner mousse or Bavarian. So let's go ahead and pour this in and we're going to top it off. So we're on our way to a super beautiful dessert. So the classic look of the Charlotte does show the lady finger sticking up on top and that's the beauty of the dessert. So this is our classic Charlotte filled, ready to go. You're going to be setting this up in the refrigerator for four to six hours. I do recommend overnight, but four to six hours will do. You can kind of touch it and test your Bavarian cream or your mousse to be sure that it is well set before you unmold it. You want this to be completely set before you unmold, unmold it, otherwise it could fall apart on you. So let's go ahead and set this aside and I have one that I made earlier. Okay, so I have the classic Charlotte that I made earlier. And what we're gonna do before we unmold the Charlotte, I always like to decorate it first. This way you can move it around. You can handle it a little, a little bit. If you were to unmold it, you're gonna wanna put it on a tray or something to move it around. But I like to do this right in the mold. So you can decorate the dessert any way you like. I like to use a little bit of whipped cream and some of the berries that are on the inside. Let's go ahead and get started. We're just going to do some whipped cream piping around the outside. And then we're going to be filling the center with some berries. 
So really, your friends and family will be so dazzled when you make this dessert for them. It's super easy. We've already done the lady fingers last week. That's a key element to this dessert, and it's what makes it really so beautiful. Okay, so I've got a little whipped cream piped. Let's go ahead and put some raspberries and maybe some blackberries and some strawberries around the inside of this just to kind of finish it off a little bit. This way everyone's going to know that there's raspberries on the inside. Kind of trying to pick out raspberries that kind of look a little bit the same. And please let me know if you have any questions. We're getting ready to wrap up after we finish decorating our Charlotte. Just super elegant, really classic dessert. Something that I definitely recommend having in your portfolio if you're using it professionally or just for fun. And you will be sure to impress everyone with this. And we have a question. The question is, is, is the Charlotte a French dessert? It definitely has a European origin to it, and it has some roots in France and also in Italy. And it's gaining more and more in popularity in the US like a lot of desserts. So let's go ahead and put some blackberries on the inside. And we have another question. Hmm? The question is, is what size piping tip is this? This is a number five star. But if you have any questions, um, the numbers vary from brands. If you have any questions and you need help with piping tips, I can definitely give you a hand with those. So just gonna put a couple of blackberries on our dessert and it'll be ready to go. I think the blackberries add a nice striking element to the dessert. And maybe we'll put a fan strawberry in the middle. Like I said, you can finish these any way you like, and they're always super beautiful. A lot of people, too, like to put a ribbon around the Charlotte once it's finished, too. That's a really nice look, especially if you're going to be giving it for a gift. So we're just going to release our springform pan, kind of open it all the way. Since I have my um, plastic rack around the lip, I'm just going to be pulling it up a little bit. Then we're just going to pull this off. And this is our classic Charlotte Royale. And then you can just pull your plastic down. See what I mean about the plastic? You always know that it's gonna release when you have the plastic in the pan. And since I have this on a cardboard, we can just go ahead and lift it up and pull it right off. Yeah, I put the cardboard down before I put the cake down. See how easily that came out of the pan? Super elegant dessert. So please try your Charlotte dessert. Send me some pictures. Let me know how you're doing. It's nice and firm. The mousse is completely set up. You see it peeking through a little bit in the, in the cracks, but that's just fine. It's just a classic beauty of the dessert. So if you don't have any questions, we're going to be saying our goodbyes. And we'll see you next week. And we do have another question. How long can it sit out? The question is, how long can it sit out? Like anything else, such a cream mousse dessert depends on how warm it is. You wouldn't want to take this to a 4th of July barbecue and leave it sit out. No way, especially in the sun. If it's at room temperature, you can leave it sit out for maybe about a half an hour. But I wouldn't leave it sit out too long, especially with mousses that have eggs and creams in them, because it is the temperature danger zone. So you want to limit your time 
in the temperature danger zone. So put it out right before it's going to be served. If it's not all eaten, then wrap it up and put it away. And you can keep this probably in the refrigerator for a few days, depending on what you're filling it with and depending um, if your lady fingers get sticky. So please enjoy the classic Charlotte dessert. It was fun making this today. Try it. It's so easy. Just a few steps. Most of these things you have made before. And we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Did they like it? <laughs>